So the Premier League has come to its conclusion at long last in this last 48 hours or so and in this video I am going to be reviewing and reacting to overall my Premier League predictions from the 2020-2021 Premier League campaign which of course as I said has just ended and um, yeah last season I got one correct out of 20 correct positions right in the Premier League table. Hopefully this season round I can get more than one. Uh, I think that's not really too much to ask of him on this but we will see if that of course did happen and um, yeah let's get straight into these predictions review now. Starting of course with the bottom team in the Premier League, the 20th position for me, and I've gone with West Brom with Shelby. Now, I think this is kind of a weird one because I think West Brom are a team that could potentially stay up, in fact, but I just don't think they'll have enough quality in depth, West Brom. I think that their starting 11 is quite good, and I think they'll be a very resolute side. I think they'll get a lot of shock results throughout the season. So, first one down, first one wrong on paper, but overall, I think not the worst of predictions overall because, yes, West Brom did finish you know, 19th. I said they'd finish 20th, but they went down, similar enough position. If Sheffield United weren't just absolutely horrendous, I would have got this right because West Brom probably would have finished 20th. They just leaked too many goals and even though I said they'd be resolute at times, which they were at times in some games and a handful of games this season, they conceded way too many goals. I did in fact say they'd pick up a few decent results, which they did do. Home and away against Chelsea, they got really good points. Liverpool, like, I picked up points, I think, against City as well. I think they drew at United at the Hawthorns in one of the games as well. So overall, West Brom just simply weren't good enough, didn't have enough quality and um, yeah, first one wrong because they finished one place above where I said they'd finish in 19th. And second bottom going down with West Brom in 19th position. I've gone for pretty much a shock one. I've gone for Crystal Palace. Now, I know a lot of people are actually tipping Crystal Palace to struggle this season purely because Wilfred Zaha, he's probably played his last game in the Premier League for Crystal Palace. He'll probably leave within this transfer window. And um, yeah, here's the first kind of, you know, meh prediction in this video. I think that's the one word I could use to describe it because Crystal Palace, I said, would finish 19th. I thought they'd be relegated and they did finish 14th in the Premier League. Five places below, or above, I should say, where I said they would finish. And overall, there's not really much I can explain other than the fact that I thought Wilfred Zaha was going to leave. I mean, every single season, we always say, especially when, you know, the end of the transfer window exceeds the the start of the Premier League season. We always think that the last few transfer days in the transfer window is going to see Zaha leave Crystal Palace for someone like Everton or someone like that. It just never happens. It didn't happen this season and um, yeah, Crystal Palace of course did in fact stay up pretty solidly. Roy Hodgson, you know, last season in management at Crystal Palace managed to keep them up in 14th place with a very experienced squad. A lot to look forward to next season for Crystal Palace with that rebuild and the new manager and um, yeah, five places above where I said they'd finish Crystal Palace so um, fair play. Now on to 18th position and the third and final team that I'm predicting to get relegated to the championship in 20 2021 West Ham United and that is one that is going to shock quite a few of you and here we go yes we'll all laugh at Nua for this prediction because this is by far the worst prediction I've had this season if not this season and last season combined I said West Ham would get relegated they finished of course sixth place in the Premier League and were quite unlucky in the last few weeks of the season not to get Champions League football for themselves as well they had an unbelievable season under David Moyes in my opinion David Moyes LMA manager of the year he has to be in my personal opinion for what he's done there and to be honest in terms of why I thought West Ham would go down I think the signs were there at the start of the season I I redid. First of all, I thought Declan Rice was going to lead to Chelsea in the latter days of the transfer window, which of course didn't happen in the end. And of course, the whole thing about Grady Diangana's, you know, departure with Mark Noble, Declan Rice, you know, all those players from West Ham, vocally on Twitter and social media, the displeasure against the, the West Ham board. There was so much turmoil. The start of the season they had as well was unbelievable. I think their first nine or ten games, everyone expected them to be bottom of the table after them. They exceeded everybody's expectations, including mine, and um, yeah, finished 12 places above where I said they'd finish in sixth place. So yeah, fair play West Ham. What a Season. Now 17th for me and a uh, marginally surviving relegation by the skins of their teeth and I have gone with quite a shock one in fairness Fulham because a lot of people think they are going to be one of the first sides relegated next season. So uh, another one I've been one off in this video I said Fulham would finish 17th they did of course get relegated finishing 18th and even though it was only one place off there was a big difference in terms of points and quality overall between 17th and 18th place. Fulham even though they came 18th were relegated with like four or five games to go it was really poor from them and to be honest I kept fate with them throughout the whole season even though I said they'd get you know stay up before for the season. I kept fate with them for so, so long because I thought they had some good quality. They played some good football with players going forward like Luckman, Loftus-Cheek, who yes, didn't turn out to be great, Sambo and Gisa in midfield, Josh Maja in January, Adarabayo and Anderson in centre-backs, Ariola. I could go on for ages with the quality of Fulham had. But overall, they just couldn't create enough chances. They couldn't, you know, turn draws into wins enough and, um, yeah, finish the season on, I think, 28 points, which isn't good enough to stay up in the Premier League this season especially. And, um, yeah, Fulham, one place below where I said they'd finish in 18th and they are playing championship football next season, which of course is all that matters for them. In 16th I've gone with another one that a lot of you are probably going to be surprised about and I've gone for Burnley. Now the sole reason for me, I think Sean Dyche is a brilliant manager, I think he will keep them up because of course Burnley are a solid side in the Premier League, but the sole reason I think they will struggle this season and will like towards the end of the season especially going into 16th is because they haven't strengthened whatsoever. And yet another one I was one off because of course as you can see I did say Burnley would finish 16th in the Premier League. They did finish of course one place below that in 17th and as I said not a massive gap between you know 16th and 15th but a massive gap between 17th and 18th 
mean. So overall, Burnley well and truly safe. And to be honest, a lot of people said Burnley would finish mid-table, especially with the fact they came 10th in the Premier League last season. But I just saw this dip-off, simply because of the fact I know Sean Dyche is a brilliant manager, and I think they need to back Sean Dyche next season, or else they definitely will be going down You know, if he's not the manager full stop. He's done wonders with that squad. But basically, as I was saying, the main reason why I thought there'd be a bit of a drop-off is because of the transfer window they had. They only signed Dale Stevens, let go of Jeff Hendrick, so you could say they you know, downgraded the transfer window by all accounts. So um, yeah, Sean Dyche, once again, done a really good job with Burnley, given the circumstances he was given. And yeah, Burnley did, of course, finish one place below where I said they'd finish in 17th, as of course I said they'd finish 16th. So yeah, another one, one place off in this video. Now on to 15th, a team that normally does kind of finish in and around this position. I predicted them to come bottom last season, and they didn't, of course. Brighton and Hove Albion, I predicted to come 15. And once again, another one, I have got one place off, because of course, as you can see, I did see Bright I did say Brighton would finish 15th in the Premier League. They did finish one place below that in 16th, and um, yeah, to be honest, it could have been a lot different for Brighton. I mean, in, in XG, they were beating nearly every team they played. They all, By all means, they could have finished in the top half if they had that striker that was going to score them 10 or more goals a season. They didn't have that whatsoever because Mopai really didn't feature that much. And even when he did, he wasn't scoring, you know, non-penalty goals too often. And to be honest, I think if Brighton were to add someone like Ivan Tony or just someone that can get them, you know, 10 or more goals a season, I really do see Brighton, you know, heading into the top half next season and exceeding everybody's expectations because they're playing a good brand of football. They're creating decent chances. They're not really conceding many goals. But overall, it just didn't happen for them this season. They always seem to be around those positions in the league. And overall, I got this one wrong by one place, as I said, because I said Brighton would finish 15th and they did, of course, finish 16th. So yeah, another one wrong. Now on to 14th place and I've gone with Newcastle. Now, a lot of people think that they will finish lower because, of course, the takeover didn't happen in the summer. And um, yeah, this one is, of course, not one place off, but it is, in fact, two places off and that is Newcastle United. Now, for most of the season, it looked like I was being too optimistic with Newcastle here because it looked like they were going to get relegated for most of the season. They were playing horrendously without Callum Wilson and Sam Maximin. Those two players literally kept them in the hunt and Joe Willock, of course, late on in the season as well with seven goals and seven games, which was unbelievable. But Newcastle somehow exceeded my prediction and came 12th in the Premier League table and it was only because of that last month or two that they really started to pick up form. As I said, it was dreadful for most of the season, but um, yeah, overall, something to build on for next season for Newcastle, even though it looks all doom and gloom for them, especially with Steve Bruce looking to stay on and, you know, unlikely that's going to be a takeover for them this summer. So um, yeah, Newcastle, two places above where I said they'd finish in 12th. Now, 13th, one that is probably going to shock a lot of people as well, but I've gone for Sheffield United now. The pure reason why, do not doubt second season syndrome. It is a real thing, ladies and gentlemen, and I think Sheffield United will be one of the biggest sufferers of that. And here's the second one that I got horribly wrong, and to be honest, I'm absolutely kicking myself from within because I thought that Sheffield United were going to get relegated. I really did. I thought second season syndrome was going to kick in from their you know, point of view massively, and of course, it very much did, but I didn't have the guts or the bottle to predict them any lower than 13th. Of course, I predicted them 13th. They finished seven places below that rock bottom of the table, only scored 20 goals all season. It was absolutely horrendous from their point of view going forward. Didn't really concede too many, but as I said, if you're only scoring 20 goals in a season, you have absolutely no chance of staying in the Premier League whatsoever. So yeah, just a horrendous season from Sheffield United. Chris Wilder didn't last the whole way, and yeah, a prediction I got horribly wrong, but could have been so much different if I actually had the gut to predict what I actually felt like. So yeah, Sheffield United horribly wrong. Now on to 12th position, and for me, it is Ralph Hasenhutl's Southampton side. So this one is the one that gives me a bit of a mixed feeling, to be honest, because, you know, as I said, in the first half of the season, it was looking like I was actually, you know, underestimating Southampton. I said they'd finished 12th, they were in the top four in December, the second half of the season just went horribly wrong for them, they were absolutely horrendous, I think the only team in 2021 to have lost more Premier League games than them is actually Fulham, which says a lot because Fulham have been terrible in this turn of the new year. But yeah, Southampton of course did finish 15th, three places below where I said they'd finish in 12th, and for some amount of the season it looked like I was going to get this bang on, but Southampton have really let me down, massive now pressure going in, and something to think about for Alf Hasenhutl and this Southampton side going into next season, they really need to pick up that momentum and that form and that spirit once again if they want to succeed next season, but yeah, poor season from Southampton overall if you think of the overall season and um, yeah, another prediction wrong in this video. Now on to 11th and another one that's probably going to shock you all because a lot of people are tipping this side to go down or even struggle for relegation and I think Aston Villa will finish 11th in the Premier League. And finally at long last we get a prediction bang on. I predicted Aston Villa correct last year, that was the only predict prediction I got correct last year and once again it's the first prediction I've got right this year because Aston Villa I said would finish 11th and they did of course finish 11th and I'm going to toot my own horn here, I'm sorry but Aston Villa everyone thought they were going to struggle this season, everybody thought in everyone's predictions I was always seeing Aston Villa in the relegation zone or just outside it. I was the only one that I can remember that said Aston Villa would succeed and finish 11th and of course they did that. They had it secured before the last day of the season. Some brilliant signings like of course Matty Cash, Emiliano Martinez, Ross Barkley who even though hasn't had the greatest of seasons overall has you know had his moments. Bertrand Traore and of course Ollie Watkins up front as well. Jack Grealish had a really good season. Aston Villa were just solid. They played some decent football. Bet Chelsea on the last day of the season and finished 11th. So yeah my first prediction correct. Hopefully not the last in this video but we'll wait and see. Now 
into the top 10 and uh, you know yourself there's always that one team that come up and just exceed expectations and obviously finish in the top 10 and I think this season that will be Leeds United under Marcelo Bielsa. So yeah another one I was one correct place off and that is of course Leeds United who did finish 9th. I said they'd finish 10th so obviously you know one place off and to be honest I think it was a lot of uh, I think it was 50-50 with Leeds. I think a lot of people thought they were going to do a Sheffield United and finish in the top half but there was a lot of people as well that predicted them to struggle in mid table or the bottom half or even you know struggle for relegation so I think that I'll give myself some credit with this one and to be honest if results had gone my way on the final day of the season I would have got this bang on but Leeds bet West Brom and Everton got slapped up by City at the Etihad in Aguero's last game so yeah Leeds finished ninth, one place off where I said they'd finish in 10th but um, yeah not the worst prediction I'd say. Now on to ninth, and I've predicted that Wolves are going to drop two places they finished seventh of course in their first two seasons back in the Premier League and I think they were finished ninth in the Premier League this season. I'm not going to lie I think that Wolves could actually struggle a lot more like Sheffield United of course as I said I think Wolves could potentially finish in the bottom half of the Premier League table. Another one like Southampton here that um, makes me feel a little bit indifferent because Wolves could have by all means you know finished ninth in the Premier League table. They did of course finish 13th in the end and uh, the reason why I say they could have potentially finished ninth in the Premier League table is because of that injury to Jimenez in November. Also they lost Pedro Neto and Pedence for a bit of the season as well and lost Diogo Jota as well in the latter days of the transfer. You know after I recorded that predictions video with all that in mind Wolves have had a really poor season. I think there's no two ways about it. Obviously Nuno Espirito Santo has of course left the club by mutual consent so they're going to rebuild for next season and um, yeah Wolves overall a really poor season. I think they'll definitely be you know dissatisfied with the season they've had. Four places below where I said they'd finish in ninth and um, yeah once again as I keep saying a disappointing season for Wolves on the whole. Now on to eighth place and another one that would probably shock a few of you because they did finish very high in the table last season higher than most people expected them and I've gone for Leicester City in eighth place. Now the pure reason for this I think that Leicester could again fight for a European place in terms of the Champions League but I just think their drop off at the end of last season especially was just absolutely mental and I think that that will carry over into next season. So yeah this is another one that's kind of you know not the greatest overall I think I will say. I'm not going to give myself credit for this whatsoever I mean obviously I got completely wrong. Leicester City I said would finish eighth they did finish three places above that in fifth and once again we're in the Champions League for pretty much most of the season and of course did bottle it in the last few games as they did last season. The reason why I said they'd finish eighth mainly because I thought with the momentum that they you know didn't have at the end of last season when they completely and utterly bottled top four in the lockdown period I thought they'd you know carry that into next season and not have the greatest of starts but overall they really did I mean you think of the 5-2 win at the Etihad against City which was unbelievable they were in the top four for I think like 30 or 35 weeks of the season which is just absolutely unbelievable they bottled it once again in the last few games and um, yeah overall not a bad season for Leicester whatsoever I will say that even though they bottled top four I mean the fact they were up there once again was you know really spectacular so Brendan Rodgers I think at this moment in time Rodgers needs an actual season to get them into the top four because he lo he's known at this moment in time in the football world as kind of a nearly man even though they won the FA Cup which was fair enough but that's two seasons in a row now they've bottled top four but nevertheless three places off in my prediction they finished fifth and I said they'd finish eighth so yeah another wrong prediction and now the best of the rest before we get into the top six I've gone for Everton in seventh place and I know I've once again bought into the fact that Everton had a good transfer win I do it every single season like most of you do as well and yeah once again for the second or third or even probably fourth or even probably fifth time running I have bought into Everton's transfer window and um, yeah it has not rewarded me whatsoever because Everton I said would finish seventh they finished tenth in the Premier League another disappointing season for Everton under Carlo Ancelotti they made some very good signings in fairness like Decore, Alan, Godfrey and Rodriguez who all did really well in my personal opinion but it just didn't happen for Everton I mean they had some injuries throughout the season at different spells they just struggled really to score goals if I'm honest and create chances in general most of the wins they had were by the odd goal they started off the season unbelievably like a house on fire they were top of the table after four or five games and then all just completely dipped that game on the final day of the season where they got slapped 5-0 at City in Aguero's last game as I said that sums up their season overall they finished 10th and um, yeah not the best of seasons overall for Everton three places below where I said they'd finish in 7th and as I keep saying a disappointing season overall and now moving into the top 6 and in 6th place who have I got I've got Tottenham Hotspur so we move into the top 6 and uh, yeah as usual I got one place off in this one I said Spurs would finish 6th they did of course finish 7th in the Premier League a really disappointing season and um, yeah overall a really weird season to be honest because as I said like Everton they started off the season like a house on fire I think in November or December they were in a genuine title challenge for the first half of the season and then around Christmas it crumbled and then the new year it just got from worse to worse Mourinho got sacked a week before the Carabao Cup, Carabao Cup final which I still can't get my head around but um, yeah Spurs finished the season with Ryan Mason and finished the season in 7th place got carried for most of the season by Kane and Son as well and yeah disappointing enough season but once again for me one place off because I said they'd finish 6th and they finished 7th now on to 5th place I've gone for the other North London side and I've gone for obviously Arsenal now I think that Mikel Arteta's first full season in charge of Arsenal will be a success because of course they finished 8th last season and I think they will go up 3 places this season into 5th place and I think they will marginally miss out on Champions League football to the 4th place team another one that's kind of you know met to be honest I mean if I switched Leicester and Arsenal in this video I would have got 2 more predictions but of course if buts maybes Arsenal finished 
finished 8th for the second season running. I said they'd finish 5th mainly because I thought they'd make some progress under Mikel Arteta, especially after that FA Cup and the signs they showed at the, la the back end of last season and beating City and Chelsea in the semis and final respectively. I thought with some of the signings they made as well, like Partey and Gabriel and even Willian, who I thought would be a decent enough signing, it just hasn't worked out for Arsenal this season. They've been really poor and really boring. Aubameyang as well, I thought would just continue firing and score like 20 plus goals this season. He's been completely awful this season, which has been one of the main reasons why Arsenal have done so poorly this season because they've struggled to score goals in most of their games this season. And yeah, really poor season from Arsenal's perspective. I said they finished fifth. They finished three places below that in eighth. Now on to the top four in fourth place. Uh, a popular opinion here, Manchester United for me in fourth place. I'm not going to lie, I do have a sneaking suspicion that United will be like last season where they'll struggle towards the start. And I think this year Solskjaer might not last the full season. I could easily be wrong because it's an out there prediction. So this is one that kind of once again divides opinion. Obviously I got it wrong. I was two places off. I said Manchester United would finish fourth. They finished second in the Premier League table. Solskjaer deserves a lot of credit, even though in that video, as you can see there, I said that they, he might get sacked, he might not last the season, but I did in fact say after that that it would it was a big statement and it might not happen. It didn't, of course, happen. Solskjaer lasted the season and um, yeah, did really well in fairness. Finished second in the table just really comfortably. They were closer to a title challenge than to dropping out of the top four. And even though I was right with, you know, the whole United starting off the season slowly like they did last season, which I think might happen again next season because United just seem to be slow starters for whatever reason, I don't know. But um, yeah, pretty decent season for United overall. They're in the Europa League final on Wednesday as well and um, yeah if they do win that very successful season for United very successful season in the league as well they finished second two places above where I said they'd finish in fourth now on to third and uh, to be honest I'm probably being pessimistic in my terms of view because of course I've got my club Chelsea in third now a lot of people think that we are in a title race and although I do share that same opinion I think I'm going to go for the safer option and just go for third so yeah my club Chelsea have really let me down in this department because if they just picked up three points on the last day and didn't bottle it completely to Aston Villa on the final day of the season they would have finished third and I would have got this prediction correct but um, yeah what can you do overall I thought Chelsea would be in a title challenge it only really lasted two or three months it didn't work out for Lampard in the end Thomas Tuchel has you know picked it up we've done really well in picking up results since Thomas Tuchel has arrived at Chelsea but overall you know not the best of seasons not the worst of seasons either I'd say it's kind of you know just the, just what we'd expect really from Chelsea this season we can go again next season it's all about the transfer window now and getting in the players Thomas Tuchel wants to adapt to this system and hopefully go again for the league title next season successful as well in terms of the fact that yes we got to an FA Cup final but we lost it and of course we're in a Champions League final as well so not the worst of seasons overall but once again it doesn't go, go down as a point on this scoreboard because I said they'd finish third and of course we did finish fourth so yeah another prediction wrong. Now this is the big one who do I think will win the Premier League in 2020-2021 and second place and I'm literally changing my mind as we go because I think it's a real 50-50 but I think I'm gonna go for Liverpool in second place. And um, yeah yeah another one that I got one place off Liverpool I said would finish second in the Premier League table of course they finished third weren't in the title challenge because of course nobody would have expected the injury crisis they had with Van Dyke, Gomez, Matip, you know, even Henderson, even Jota for a bit of the season as well was injured, Alisson for a few weeks as well. It's just gone horribly wrong for Liverpool this season, but they did manage to pick it up in the latter weeks, did really, really well. Flair play Jurgen Klopp for, you know, picking them back up and actually getting them into the top four. They finished third. Not a bad season from their perspective whatsoever. I think they'll go again for the Premier League next season if they have the mentality to do so, with the fact they have the likes of leaders like Van Dyke and Henderson, who are quality players as well. I think they'll add a few players as well, like Kanate. So, yeah, positive enough signs for Liverpool, but of course, no points for me in this one because I got this prediction wrong ultimately. I said they finished second and they finished one place below that in third place. But yeah, I think that Liverpool will finish second, which of course means that my Premier League champions for the 2020-21 campaign, Manchester City under Pep Guardiola. And finally, we complete this video with the second and final point I'm going to get in this video because of course Man City did win the league and I said they would win the league. I mean, not the most, you know, scintillating, sparkling football, you know, the City ever played in their lives, but they got the job done defensively. They were unbelievable. Ruben Diaz coming to fruition for them. Unbelievable next to John Stones for them. Completely completely dominated the defence for them. And to be honest, City started off the season really, really poorly. You think of the 5-2 home defeat to Leicester, the 1-1 draw home at home to West Brom, but the form between December and March was just something else for City. I'm pretty sure they won like 95, if not more percent of those games that they did play between that time period. Even though they finished the season quite, you know, suspectly, I suppose is the word I'm going to use, if that's even the word, they still managed to win the league and they picked up 86 points. They definitely deserved it. They ran away from it after, you know, January or February, you could say. And um, yeah, City have got myself a second and final point in this video. So we have beaten last year's score of two points, but overall, Overall, not too happy with it overall because I was one off with a lot of predictions in this video probably about six or seven positions in this league I was one off so not the worst overall I'm going to cut myself a little bit of slack in that department but next year in August I'm going to be putting up another predictions video for the Premier League and hopefully it can be more than two this year we got one last year we got two this year next year going to be three hopefully more than that but um, yeah we shall wait and see so yeah, that is where we're going to leave this video guys if you did enjoy this video make sure to drop a like it would be much appreciated as per usual and it means more than you guys could ever imagine if you were to leave a like rating on this video in terms of getting this channel discovered on the YouTube algorithm and also, if you could subscribe to the channel as well, that would be hugely appreciated.
appreciated by myself. We are looking to hit 1.7k subscribers on this channel as soon as we possibly can. So if you're to hit that subscribe button right now, it would be hugely appreciated by myself. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Thanks very much for watching and see ya.